Hello folks, welcome to Dig Drive DIY. My name is Neil, and today we're doing a little bit of a DIY project, and it's actually my first ever YouTube collaboration with another YouTuber. So I'm really excited about that. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I spend a lot of time with my John Deere garden tractors, and also I've got a little John Deere utility tractor. This tractor is a John Deere 755. It was built in the mid to late 80s or 90s. In my opinion, these older tractors are great. Oftentimes they're much more affordable than a brand new tractor. It's got a quick attach loader, it's got four wheel drive, a diesel engine, a foot operated hydrostat, all the makings of what all the modern tractors are. John Deere was really ahead of its time with this machine because now there's hundreds of copies on the market. But the one thing that these older models do not have is a quick attach bucket. Now there's a lot of debate surrounding whether or not you should have the Bobcat style quick attach or maybe you'd prefer the John Deere quick attach. Either way, I'm not here to debate that. Either one is fantastic. But one of the first modifications I made was to make that bucket quick attach. Since I had already done this modification to my tractor, I needed to find someone that was willing to let me do it to theirs so that I could make a video of it. And that's where Captain Kleeman comes in. If you haven't seen Captain Kleeman's channel, He's a YouTuber that also does some dirt work because he works for Dirt Perfect, who's another YouTuber. And so he captures a lot of content where he's working for Dirt Perfect and moving equipment. But he also does a lot of work around his homestead. He's building a cabin and he's documenting the whole entire process of clearing the land, building the access road. More recently, he's getting ready to dig a pond. A lot of stuff going on his channel. He's a great guy. I met him just several weeks ago in anticipation for this project. He features a lot of videos of his channel where he's using his John Deere 755. And as luck would have it more recently, he had a subscriber of his send him the quick attach hardware so that he could modify his bucket and make it quick attach. Well, on his channel, he mentioned that he was probably going to try this conversion. And so I emailed him. I said, Captain, I've done this to my tractor. I think we should get together and do a collaboration where I modify your bucket and then I'll bring it down and visit you and we'll try it out. If you are here and you haven't checked out Captain Kleeman, I'm going to link his channel above and you can check it out and see what all he's up to. All right, let's get to work on uh, Kleeman's bucket. For reference purposes, the plates that are attached to the back of the bucket, I'll refer to those as weld mounts. I'm going to call these the quick attach mounts. These are what get it's mounted to the end of the loader arms on the tractor. And then I have a quick attach plate, which is this right here. And this quick attach plate will get attached to the back of the bucket. The goal for me when I did this to my tractor was to make sure that I got it as close as possible to the factory configuration for the, for the bucket and the weldments. It will really compromise your lifting capacity if you extend that bucket out too far forward of the lifting arm pivot pins. So to start things out, what I'll need to do is cut these weldments off the back of the bucket. Before I cut them off, and what you should do is make sure you have a very good, accurate understanding of where these mount locations are in relation to the top of the bucket, from the top of the bucket to this first pin. For this one, it's about eight inches. The distance between the weldments on this one is 35 and three quarter. That looks like it's about two and 11 sixteenths. The hardest part is getting started. Do all this setup with the camera and all this setup with the stuff. Now I just need to get busy, get it done. Anytime you got to cut a weld, it could be a pain in the butt, but my tool of choice for cutting this off is going to be an angle grinder with a metal cutting wheel. These work great, but you have to be patient and you have to be willing to try to get the thing in to some funky angles to get it to cut. Go slow. You can't get in a hurry when you're trying to do this. The idea is to cut through the weld, but like 90% of the way through the weld. You don't want to cut all the way through it so that we don't cut holes into the actual bucket itself. And we're trying not to cut and compromise too much the weldment itself either. I'm having trouble getting the grinder in to do this weld on the back here. And I'm having trouble getting these cut off the middle rather than the inside. There we go. This is why I said it takes patience. You have to be patient and not just cut a little bit and then start beating with the hammer. Patience is the key. Yeah. 
There we go. I just gotta do that three more times. This little bit right here is the only weld holding up. So I'm gonna try to break it off of there. So I got all four weldments cut off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up all these welds and from where I was cutting on them with the grinder. And then I need to clean down the back of the bucket. I'm gonna grind all this smooth. I'm gonna lay the quick attach plate up there. And then I will grind around the plate everywhere where I'm gonna put a weld so that I have good bare metal to bare metal contact. So see this plate is such that in order to have any ground clearance, we're gonna to wanna to mount it probably about as high as it'll go. That's what I did on, on my bucket. Kind of see how that curve is. You can see a gap there underneath. Now let's see if I can knock that down a little bit right there. grind the paint off and then we will attach this quick attach plate to the back of the bucket. Okay. The main thing to keep in mind when mounting the attachment plate to the back of the bucket is to obviously try to get it as square and even as straight on the bucket as you can. Measure from all different directions and just try to come up with the best compromise, something that looks the best. Oh, I need a new hood. This is the weld here that everyone will see. So I'm going to be sure to try to do that one nice and get a nice heavy coat of paint on it. You're less likely to warp it if you move around move around the work. I hate this mask. Ah. All right, so we are done with that step of the project. We've got the quick attach plate welded onto the back of Captain Clement's bucket. Now I got to get to work on those quick attach mounts. We'll get that mocked up and uh, keep moving on. All right, the next thing I need to work on are the weldments. Since I cut them off, they got a lot of rough edges, a lot of residual welds that are still left on here. And so I just need to get these all straightened up and ground off, and then I will try to straighten them up if, if they're bent or distorted at all. So we'll get those ready so we can start getting our quick attach mount built. I'm gonna have to raise the weldments from the bucket up off of this plate for two reasons. Number one, if I were to mount these all the way down against here, it's not going to give me enough clearance from this plate, this backing plate on the bucket. And number two, the other side of the bracket, if this were mounted down flush, these pins are going to hit against this plate right here. So I went to metal supermarkets and I got some steel for this. All right, this is my inch and a half by four inch stuff. There's a lot of plastic on there. So I had them pre-cut it to 14 inches long. I'm gonna try to trim it to match the angles here a little bit. I'm gonna try to mark mark this to cut it to length. I'm going to try to stick with my goal here and do this whole project with just a grinder, a welder, a tape measure, and a hammer. So I'm going to, even though I have a chop saw, I'm just going to see if I can cut these off with the grinder. So. 
one and a half by four inch that I just cut fits in there really good. You can see that this is up against this stop right here. Not quite touching there. Be able to weld right along there. I'm also gonna have to grind a little paint off of here anywhere where I want to weld it. So there we are. So I'm gonna let you take a good close look at these, where they're positioned and how they're on there, and then we'll start thinking about these weldments. So I'm going to go ahead and get these one and a half by fours attached to my mounting plates, and then I'll go ahead and start working on getting the weldments mocked up on these. What I need to do is establish a reference, and I'm going to use the very top of this. This is going to be my reference line to measure off of. I need something that's consistent in both pieces sure you are as accurate as possible. Oops. Can you see that line across there? Now what I need to do is mark where I'm going to cut the weldment so that they fit on here because they're longer than what they need to be. So things are going to be a lot easier if you have a three quarter inch piece of rod that you can use to reference stuff. But I'm basically going to sit it on top of this weldment. I want to measure five and a quarter inches from this edge of this pin to that center line. So I'm going to mark it right here to cut it off. So I'm going to take this one and cut it and use it to mark and cut all the rest of them. As long as the holes line up. Okay, I've got all my weldments cut and ready to put together. I've got the mounting plates assembled. I was doing a little bit of a dry fit here on some of these parts to make sure that the lever handle and the bolt wasn't going to hit the pin when it was in position. So you just want to take everything that you know about the measurements and how this stuff should align and try to make sure that you're not missing anything. Like that's just going to barely miss that bolt. And I know that that was the case on the last one I did too. I actually had to grind that bolt, make sure it was oriented correctly in order for this to close all the way, which is no big deal. You just got to be aware of it ahead of time. So, so all these pieces are ready. My bucket's ready. The bucket has a nice new square quick attach plate that has straight edges and a flat surface. And I think that's going to be our best bet in terms of mocking this up. We have our measurements that we took prior to cutting the weldments off the bucket and we know the distance between the weldments. We know the distance between the loader arms. It would be 35 and 3 quarter inches between the weldments and then there's 2 and 11 16 between each set. Let's see if we can measure that out and get it all set up. I, uh, I started out by taking this 1 inch by 2 inch piece and I had it cut to 35 and 3 quarter the distance between my weldments. I just encourage you to measure twice, weld once. I'm going to tack it all together first and make sure I'm happy with it. So I think I've got these in place. I've got the quick attach mounts. I made sure that they were down flush against the bucket and I made sure they were square on the edges so that hopefully our weldments are, are straight. I've got this piece in place so that I know my distance is good down here at 35 and 3 quarter. And then I want to have that same measurement up here at the top. Ooh, it looks like I'm a little short right there, so I'll have to spread that out a little bit. That's why we measure twice, weld once. Alright, I'm going to tack it before I bump it again. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way it fits. Um, all my margins look good. I've got good spacing. Everything looks square, so 
I'm going to pull it back off of there and weld on the other two weldments. Actually, i got to get those welded on solid, but uh, I think it's a matter of welding it up, and then we're going to maybe paint it, and then we'll go see about visiting Captain Kleeman. So, all right, let's move on. The one thing that I will have to do yet is put a stop in the bottom here. So yeah, that's just a 3 8 bolt. I'm going to cut it off, tack it on there, and that's just going to provide a little bit extra stop. It just moves it that much and that's all I need. Here's mine. I got a little piece of rebar in there. That just keeps it from uh, curling around too far and overextending the cylinders. Wire brush. Scotch Bright scuff pad. Air hose. Berry scraper. Solvent cleaner. Paint. Well, I'm going to call this quick attach complete. Now it's time to load it up and get the family in tow and head down and visit Captain Kleeman and see what he thinks of it. Yeah, it looks good on there. All right. all right, we are all loaded up, ready to go visit Captain Kleeman. I'm excited about my first YouTube collaboration and I look forward to doing whatever projects that Captain Kleeman has lined up for us to do. Hopefully he can make good use of his quick attach bucket. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you over on Captain Kleeman's channel. And if you're new to this channel because of Captain Kleeman, I thank you so much for visiting. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Oh, I made it to the cabin in Derby, Indiana. Boy, Derby is just beautiful, isn't it? Are you guys ready to check out the cabin? Yes. We got firewood.